the broadcast on the Focalizer Network, the only show that covers all your favorite fandoms, with your host, Justin Thomas. What's going on, everybody? Justin Thomas here. We're talking Game of Thrones today. No, we're not talking about the teaser trailer. If you're looking for information on that, look anywhere on the internet. It's everywhere. We actually have a connection between the bittersweet ending George has promised in Bittersweet Nightshade. So let's get into it. This one's for you. Check it. Yo. On the real, your boy is a hip-hop player. But for this joint here, I'll play the role of King Slayer. See, toe to toe, blow for blow, we can play. I'm just going to start off by saying that this video is inspired by someone who's an important part of the channel, a friend and colleague, Joanna, that's been with me and Focalizer from the start. You don't hear her voice that often, but you do hear her ideas, and this is a great one that sprouted out of some of the research she was doing for a blog that has posted on Focalizer.com by the time this video comes out. George R. R. Martin has told us in a few interviews that his ending will be bittersweet. We all know bittersweet means something that is both pleasant and painful or regretful. But the whole story has been bitter. Do we really expect anything sweet in the end? That would be too obvious and uninspiring for our master of all things shocking. So this led to the question of what did George really mean by a bittersweet ending? Doing some research, Joanna actually came across a real-life connection through the work of a botanist and herbalist, John Gerald. He maintained one of the largest herbal gardens in London, as well as being the author of The History of Plants that was published in 1597 and was the most widely circulated botany book throughout the 16th and 17th century. This led to a fascinating connection when she found out that bittersweet is also a name for a plant. And this plant is a woody nightshade. It's a climbing plant. It's part of the nightshade family, and it has a small violet star-shaped flower with protruding yellow center and scarlet berries. Bittersweet contains alkaloid solanine and can be used narcotically. John Gerald's book has an interesting little part that states the juice is specifically good for those who have fallen from high places. And I think we all know a certain boy that's fallen from a high place. Okay, so bittersweet is also the name of a plant that happens to be nightshade, which comes up in the book and show multiple times. No big deal. And it might not be. But at the same time, I think it's far too fascinating to ignore this. That We've all heard the theory that we as viewers are witnessing the coma dreams of Bran, but add in this real-life medical connection that furthers the evidence of this theory and the tie to George's bittersweet ending it's far too fascinating to ignore nightshade it comes up too much in the show and book like i said and we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this connection to its real use in holistic medicine when you think about it it's very possible that after brand's fall maester lewin probably gave brand bittersweet nightshade and brand is suffering from the side effects of a narcotic webmd lists bittersweet nightshade side effects as including delirium and delirium is a serious disturbance in mental abilities that results in confused thinking and reduced awareness of your environment. So it is possible that he is experiencing the medicinal side effects of a homemade narcotic. This is a concoction capable of bringing to life old man's horror stories that he loved to listen to. So George definitely made sure to include this bittersweet nightshade in the recovery process of brand in the pictures that we're putting up on the screen right now you'll see you'll see catlin and maester lewin placing nightshade you'll see actually uh catlin bundling some nightshade and placing it around his bed and maester uh lewin looking over brand now nightshade not only has a few medicinal uses or a place in holistic medicine at least it plays a big role in a lot of spiritual and magical practices got a pretty large presence in magical folklore bittersweet nightshade is traditionally used for protection from sorcery and the evil eye as well as cleansing and healing it's considered a typical fairy herb it invokes female deities of a darker kind who have links to the underworld and the souls of the dead. All this links into Bran in one way or another with his storyline. Whether you believe he is conscious and in a tree, 
traveling throughout time or if you think that he is in a fever dream. The reason I love this is because it's a, it's a nice mix between some real world science and some mythical folklore. So, so is this hard evidence that we are seeing the drug slash injury induced fever dreams of Bran? For the hardcore believers of the theory that we're witnessing a fever dream of Bran's, this definitely adds weight to your argument, that's for sure. As far as my opinion, I think that the bittersweet connection can go way further than that, and I think that George definitely chooses his words very carefully for being beneficial for those falling from high places. That made me think of it in a more metaphorical way, and it made me think of falling from high places in society, and more specifically, power, especially queens. Cersei is no stranger to Nightshade, that's for sure. There's plenty of it in King's Landing. We've seen it pop up. Uh, Tyrion was accused of having it. And maybe in the end of all this, in this bittersweet ending, we will have some bittersweet Nightshade and somebody will fall from a high place of power. I think that it's an excellent connection and a good find. And you should definitely go over to Focalizer.com and read the blog. And we're going to be doing more on this as we do some more research into it. But all in all, the dual meaning of bittersweet definitely adds a cool aspect to all these theories, not just the brand being in a coma or fever dream theory. Do you think it has a place in the bittersweet ending? Or do you think it's just a coincidence or a fun play on words that George decided to put in? Either way, it's definitely another interesting aspect to this already fascinating world of A Sound of Ice and Fire. And again, I encourage you to go to FocalizerShow.com and check out the blogs. We'll be doing at least one more video and probably a discussion with Joanna on this topic as we look into it more. And I encourage everybody that's listening to do the same go to FocalizerShow.com and read the blog, and then the source links will be below. And come to your own conclusions, and let's have a conversation about it. So make sure to like and subscribe. We're looking to do more videos, not podcasts, so we do need more support on the YouTube channel. I'm Justin Thomas. This is the Justin Thomas Show on the Focalizer Network, and I will see you guys in a few days. Five years for dance. This one's for you. Check it. Yo. On the real, your boy is a hip-hop player But for this joint here, I play the role of King Slayer See toe-to-toe, blow for blow, we can fight G But word to Jamie, there are no other men like me This industry is in a roughed-up state Cats front so tough, you call the bluff, they fake